We offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, scripture readings, and special seasonal prayers. For your free copy, order online at heartofthenation.org or call us toll-free at 1-855-855-MASS or write to Heart of the Nation, Post Office Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53214. Your privacy is important to us, and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. The Heart of the Nation Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please consider an offering today to support the Mass on TV and online. Thank you, and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, let us take a moment to prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mystery, recall our sins, and ask for God's pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, show favor to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, we may always be watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Great. Thanks. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands in which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they no longer need fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. 
For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When Jesus disembarked, he saw the vast crowd. His heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the ancient world, shepherds were indispensable in their care for their sheep. They would pasture them, allow them to feed during the day, and then at night they would protect them and watch over them from predators. Well, in this first reading from Jeremiah, God is criticizing the shepherds of Israel, actually the kings of Israel. They're deeply flawed characters morally. They care more about themselves than the people of Israel. I'll give you some examples. Look at the first king, Saul. Saul is incredibly jealous of David, even to the extent of trying to kill him repeatedly. Next comes David, and we know David is an adulterer and a murderer. After David comes Solomon. Solomon essentially goes into idolatry, practices it, and then leads the entire nation of Israel into idolatry. And so these leaders, these shepherds, are not good moral characters. It affects their leadership. And that's what God is criticizing here. And yet here's the good news that Jeremiah is prophesizing. God himself now, he will be our good shepherd. As he says, I myself will gather the remnant of my flock. Well, that's a great segue into the gospel. In the gospel, we see this beautiful portrait of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ gathering people. Now, Jesus is the long-awaited shepherd that Jeremiah prophesied. And he gathers first his apostles, and then he continues to gather throughout his entire ministry through open table fellowship, through miracles, and through this gospel that we just heard. Now notice how it begins. It says, The apostles gathered with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. Now several verses before this gospel story, Jesus sends out the twelve, and he gives them their mission, you know, to evangelize. Well, now they're coming back from that missionary trip, and they want to tell Jesus all the good news, so they're so excited. You know, Jesus wants to hear that. That's why he says, let us go to a deserted place and rest a while. So you see friendship now with Jesus and the apostles. They're all excited. They want to tell them all the great things that they've done. And yet it says, the people were coming in great numbers, and they had no opportunity to eat. Well, the people are swarming over Jesus. And it's a level of frenzied intensity. And this crowd is gathering it's to this extent that they don't even have time for themselves. So what is going on here? Well, the crowd sense Jesus is the one, the long-awaited Messiah and the Good Shepherd. And so they're gathered around him in this frenzied rush. Now notice, essentially, Jesus, it says, his heart was moved with pity because they were sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Well, that's a great picture of our Good Shepherd. Jesus gathering the people and then keeping them and teaching them. Well, it begs the question, how does Jesus shepherd? 
Well, Paul tells us in that second reading, in Jesus Christ, you who were once far off have become near through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Paul is telling us the world has come to know Jesus as the Messiah and our good shepherd. And since we're all made in the image and likeness of God, essentially we're naturally drawn to him. Now, remember, one of the central missions of our church is to continue that work of gathering people. Where is that most clearly seen? Right here, right now. Every time we gather for Mass, it's God gathering us, all of us, you know, just like he did in the Gospel. And what does he do first? He teaches us, right? That's why we listen to the readings in the Gospel. We learn from God. And then God feeds us, the Panis Angelicus, the bread of the angels. And finally, at the end of Mass, he sends us out. He sends us out just like the apostles and the 72 disciples. He sends us out to bear witness to our faith and to the presence of Christ in our life. And we can do it. Why? Because our identity is rooted in Jesus Christ. And so we leave, and we leave witness to Jesus Christ in our life. We bear witness to that throughout the entire world. See, when we do that, then yes, we participate in the church's mission of gathering all people to our good shepherd, to Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father of God. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's presence with us now, we turn to him with these petitions. For Pope Francis and for all bishops and pastors, that they may shepherd their flock with the care and love shown by Jesus to the people who crowded to him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, for the preservation of its verdant pastures and the care of clean, restful waters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of injustice, discrimination, or hardship, because of race or religion, may their faith be deepened in God and may their experience of his protection come through. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For good weather and abundant crops, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially among our heart of the nation parish family, may they soon know healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, may they be granted eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and prayers of all our Heart of the Nation parish members, including those joining us from the states of Oregon and Montana, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers, and if it is your will to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, who in one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of your law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, encountered the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. Therefore, we blend our voices with all the angels and saints as we acclaim. O Lord, you are indeed holy, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy upon us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him with him in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace, especially to those in heart of the nation. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, lest are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, graciously be present to your people, we pray, and lead those who imbued with these heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. offer our viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the prayers for the Mass, scripture readings, and special seasonal prayers. For your free copy, order online at heartofthenation.org or call us toll-free at 1-855-855-MASS or write to Heart of the Nation, Post Office Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53214. Your privacy is important to us and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're joining us through YouTube, please click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. The Heart of the Nation Mass is a viewer-supported ministry. Please consider an offering today to support the Mass on TV and online. Thank you and may God bless you.